Okay, we're gonna get Dark Mod set up on your computer now. Hopefully it'll go a little smoother than the Doom 3 install, but it really is pretty simple. It's basically just downloading a folder and putting it in your Doom 3 directory. So I'm just gonna start where you might, doing a Google search on Dark Mod. We're gonna go to the main page here. And if you scroll down, here's the Dark Mod 1.0 release news and the download link to the download page. Now that's the same as the download link up here. So we're just gonna go to downloads, download missions, we'll do that later. Download the mod, go to the mod download page. All right, here's the instructions for Windows. A few steps here, that's what we're gonna be doing. If you have Linux, you're smart, you can figure this out. If you have BitTorrent set up, you probably also know what you're doing, so you can figure that out. If you have trouble with the installation, there are more detailed answers on the wiki. These mirrors are just for the install program itself. You can see it down there, tdm update win.zip. But that's the same as this link here, so we'll just go up here. Create a dark mod folder in your Doom 3 directory. So I go down to start, my computer, you just gotta go find where you installed Doom 3. We installed it onto our F drive. So we're gonna go into there, into games, there's Doom 3, and then down here, right click, new folder, and call it dark mod. And we're going it. Okay, right now there's nothing here. So download the updater, click on that, and save. You could open it. Um, I prefer to save all my downloads first. I have it set up to automatically download to the desktop. You will probably have to select a save location. I recommend the desktop. If you save it somewhere else, like my documents or some other place, you'll just have to go find the file. Okay, this is a zip file. It's not the actual updater program. So I'm just going to double click that to open up the zip. There it is. So here's the TDM update exe. The exe is the clue to you that that's actually a program file that's going to run. So here's the uh, dark mod folder that's empty. I'm just going to take this exe and drag it over and drop it in there. There it is. Okay, so I'll close the zip file. And before I throw this away, I'll just show you another method. Since I know there's only one file inside of it and not like 100, Sometimes what I'll do is I'll right click and go over and let go. And then in the menu here, I'll select WinRAR extract here. And that'll just put whatever's in the zip onto my desktop. There it is. Then I could take it and stick it in the folder. We already have it though. So that's just another method I use that works with WinRAR. But anyway, those are trash. And I keep my trash bin empty. So we have the updater program. Extract the updater to, uh, uh, from the zip and put it in your dark mod folder. We just did that. Then start it. It will connect to one of the mirrors and download the mod. So that's it. Just click on that. It opens this DOS window here, back from the good old days, and starts the updater. It quickly checks the folder here, and it didn't find all the dark mod files, so it says does not exist. Getting it and it's going to proceed to download all the mod files. Now the updater is going to check each file to make sure it's not corrupt or bad and if it is it'll re-download it from a different mirror or try again from the same one. In the end it's just going to make sure that you have a good download of everything you need. Also you can interrupt it or stop at any point and when you start again it'll see what you have so far and start from there. If you ended up with only half of a certain file it'll start that file over and then go from there. So it's pretty fail safe and it'll take care of you and get you the mod one way or another. Now, there's some other options to get the dark mod. We just saw you can do a torrent to them. There's also online at FileShack and FilePlanet, they have the whole mod as a single download. You can get it those ways and still be able to do the automatic updating later through this update program. In the future, when the dark mod team does updates such as models and textures and new AIs, bug fixes, and any other updates they do. You can just run the same TDM update file and it'll once again check your folder and see if there's any files that you don't have and it'll download them and put them in the right place automatically. Alright, if we look on here we see it's downloading each file one at a time, checking the integrity 
and making sure it's a good file. If we look in the folder, it shows we have 98 megabytes so far. The whole mod is about 1.4 gigabytes or 1400 megabytes. So we have 1300 to go. It's going to take a little while. All right, we're getting towards the end of the download here. Uh, what I did is I let it download for a while and it got most of the files. Then I stopped it for a while and then when I came back and ran the update again, it checked the folder. It found most of the files here. It says it is okay. It found a few more that doesn't exist yet. So it's getting the last few files. So it should be done in just a couple minutes here. I'll just let that cook for a little bit. Looks like it's kind of getting hung up on this TDM Update Linux zip. So I'm just going to close it. I'm going to go back up to the update and run it again. It should just find that I have all the files except for that one. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's going through each one. There it is. Update Linux does not exist. We'll just let it try again. All right, that's just taking way too long. So I'm going to close it again. I don't even care about that file. Okay, so I'll just refresh the folder. I like to organize my folders by type. That way the program files are up front. You know, everything's together where they should be. If we go back to the site, it says, after the installation, you'll find TDM Launcher within the dark mod folder. Let's actually just close the website. And here it is, TDM Launcher EXE. I'm going to click that, see how it goes. All right, it's loading up. The dark mod. So far, so good. All right, it looks like, uh, once again, we have the problem of it not having focus. Hold Alt, hit Tab and tab over to the Doom 3 and there it is. Not sure why that happens, it might just be me because I'm using this recording software to make the tutorial, but we're in. You probably want to adjust your settings. I want to set it to 16.9, 1280 by 720. That's what's going to work good on my monitor. You can adjust various settings here. The ambient rendering and interaction shader and Bloom are things that are going to affect how the mod works or how buggy it might be, especially Bloom. That has caused a lot of people to have a lot of problems. We recommend having it off. And of course, there's going to be your options for the game and all your controls. Uh, we won't do that right now. When you set the graphic options, you can see it says changes to video settings will work the next time you load. So we actually have to quit. Okay, we're back at the desktop. We'll start it again. It should hopefully have the new resolution settings we just chose. Okay, screen looks nice and sharp. Looks like we got the right settings here. Select new mission. There's no missions installed. The only one available is the training mission. You can download other missions and they would be on the list. But for now, we'll just select the training mission, install it. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I'm in the, the credits. I did make one little section one little tiny little piece which was used. What it's going to do is it has to rearrange the folders within the Doom 3 folder, within the Darkmon folder. It has to restart in order for it to work. So don't click to start it again. It's, it is already restarting itself. Now when we click on New Mission, it's currently installed. So we can start it. Oh, intro movie. I'll skip that. Okay. Well, let's, we'll just kind of move along here. Start. Of course, if you're really playing, you would watch the movie and read that stuff carefully. Dark mod missions can load a little bit slowly. Sometimes they can seem very slow. Um, you'll just want to wait. We recommend just giving it a lot of time. If you have a really, really new, fast computer system, you might be able to load missions in just a minute. And uh, your hard drive speed and your memory is going to help a lot with that. 
Okay. Here we are. We're in the main start room here. There's some different options on places to go. Uh, looks like we have a door problem here. So that bright lit up door is a graphic problem. Whoa. Well, we run into a bug. Bright white light stuff everywhere. All right, well, that's enough to show that it works. If you have graphical glitches like that, there's all kinds of different uh, suggestions and solutions on the wiki and on the forums. But as we can see, the mod is basically working. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting up Dark Radiant so you can actually get started editing. Escape to the menu here, go to the main menu, and quit. Then from the main main menu, quit the whole mod. Okay, I just thought I'd add this in. I was looking up that graphic bug that we found. I'm going to try a couple options to fix it. So I'm going to run TDM Launcher. Okay. Settings, video. The settings that are going to affect graphic errors, the ambient rendering, standard, and fast. Fast is actually a lower quality, so it would run faster, right? If you're getting really bad frame rates, you might want to set the ambient rendering on fast. The interaction shader, that's the more complicated one. I'm going to put that on standard instead of high quality. Okay, standard. Uh, that affects a subtle shading effect on the textures. The high quality looks a little nicer. It's a very, it's a minor detail, but it can sometimes lead to a little bit of glitches. And apparently that white all over some of the places is caused from that. I'm going to have to quit and restart because you have to restart for all graphic issues. TDM Launcher to restart. By the way, for those of you who have ATI video cards, uh, one of the most common problems is you have a weird, funky-looking sky that rotates all over the place in a few of the missions. It depends on whether the mission used an advanced technique for setting up the sky. The most common solution is to, first of all, have Bloom off. Bloom can lead to that problem. Also, go into your ATI Catalyst Control Center and turn off Catalyst AI. For most people, that solves the problem right there. Go to New Mission, start the training mission. It's still installed. Start mission. We'll just go through this door again. And yeah, this door is not bright. If you get a pause like that when you're opening a door, it's usually just a case of uh, the computer loading up the outside textures for just a second. All right, all that white stuff is gone. All right, so it's working good.